Creating the Fibonacci Spiral, the ISGB Commemorative Bead for 2021. Creating the Base Bead. The base beads for the Fibonacci Spiral paintings are pretty simple. They don't need to be very fancy since I'm just building myself a small glass canvas. Each bead is made entirely out of 104 ephedra white glass. I carefully set my ends and check for the proper length with the jeweler's brass millimeter gauge. This is helpful for maintaining size, but occasionally the squish shaping step at the end of the bead makes one a little bit longer, but such is the way of handmade beads. Once I have the end set, I can focus on building mass, winding up approximately one and three quarter rods of glass per bead. A little shaping with the marver and it's flattening time. I use parallel mashers to set the middle thickness of the bead and then use a smaller marver by hand to sandwich the disc against my torch top marver to thin the edges and round the bead evenly. With the bead in a shape I like, I can carefully fire polish the surfaces for a smooth finish and tuck it away to anneal. With the first bead finished, all that's left to do is repeat. I usually make about a dozen base beads at a time. They take around 15 to 20 minutes a piece to get them perfect, but once you're in the swing of it, they go by pretty quickly. I could use clear glass as a core, but honestly, the white by itself flattens so very nicely. And since I'll be heating these up a second time to fire set the paint, I don't want to take any chances with possible incompatibilities. I only have two torches, a Nortel Miner bench burner and a GTT Lynx. I use the Lynx for the base beads because it has so much more kick than my little Nortel Miner. While the base beads anneal, the laser cut boxes are assembled. The parts for the boxes are laser cut out of 12 by 18 sheets of quarter inch birch plywood. Each sheet of wood is prepped for cutting by layering painter's tape on both sides to prevent burn marks on the wood. After the designs have been laser cut, and I use the big fancy laser cutters over at my local maker's space that make short work of it, the tape has to be removed from every single piece and all of the sides will be sanded smooth. The next step is the glue. I have tight bound wood glue in a super fine needle tip bottle so I can apply a very narrow band and not make a big mess of every box. The sides and bottom are snapped into place and the bead stand is used as a guide so the sides don't narrow at the top as they dry. A couple of bits of painter's tape hold the box together and it's set aside to dry for 24 hours. Like the base beads, it's a bit of a production line. It's glue, tape, repeat. A few cool features of these boxes is that the top curve is what's called a living hinge, where the wood has been laser cut into alternating bands that let the wood bend smoothly. These also come with a bead stand that locks in place in the box with a little back block for sturdy storage, but can be easily removed for display. The bead stand is a simple rectangle of the same wood as the box with a small wooden dowel pressure set into the center. On to the painting. The first step in the painting process of these beads is to establish a black outline for the design. I'm using glass line paints, conveniently already in liquid form, one of the many reasons I love them, which acts a little like a fickle cross between watercolor and acrylic paints. I use a small watercolor brush to sketch on where the Fibonacci spiral should go. This first pass is just a rough outline. Because this paint is just glass powder, a little binder, and water, the color is easily moved or cleared away from a space with the use of a clean brush or a little water and a bit of blotting paper towel. With my rough sketch down, I can go back and clean up edges, smooth lines, and add details. If a sketch goes entirely wrong, I can just flood the surface with water, blot the entire design away, and start with a blank slate. I suppose glass line paints are more like the most forgiving watercolors at this stage. Here, we have the completed initial outline of the design. Step two, base color. This first base color is pale sesame with white at the tail tip and the belly. 
This paint dries very quickly, so by the time you're done painting one layer and you have the next paint on the palette, your base is already dry enough to be painted over. One thing to keep in mind with glass line paints is that they are very transparent. All of the layers will show through slightly in the end, which is why that initial outline has to be cleaned up so very well. Here's that second layer finished. You can see I've obscured some of the outline and that's okay. The third layer is a warm orangey middle tone labeled camel to darken the back, face, and tail fur of our spiraled kitty. With every layer, I cover a little less, like watercolor, working my way from lights to darks. With every added layer, I also have to be a bit heavier with the paint in my brush because the previous layers pull moisture away from my brush tip with every stroke. This is the first layer where I start using little dashes and lines to emphasize fur and fuzz. Here we have the finished camel middle coat. The final color layer is a bold terracotta red to emphasize the stripes on the cat's face, body, and paws. This is layered on in little dashes to really make the fluff come to life. The palette I'm working off of is a simple sheet of float glass covered in old, but still very usable, glass paint. One of the wonderful things about glass line paints is that like watercolors, they can completely dry and be reconstituted with just a few drops of water. Very handy for an artist who is easily distracted. And a view of that final terracotta coat. And the last step on our Fibonacci spiral we have our final outline, where a super thin band of black paint is used to sharpen edges and lines, add whiskers and claws, and generally give it a finished look. You'll notice that I refill my brush much more often with this last layer, and that's because with so many layers of dry paint under it, the moisture is just wicked away from my brush as soon as it touches the surface. I have to be a little more cautious with this final layer, because if I put paint in the wrong place now, with all of these built up layers, there's no way to undo it except for to start entirely over. Adding the whiskers is the most nerve wracking part of this entire project. And there you have it, the final outline and the finished Fibonacci spiral. One final addition to each bead that makes these beads special is the year and my initials on the back. Again, in simple black paint. Like the first outline, they are painted on and then tidied up. I'm finding myself very thankful for the calligraphy classes I've taken to keep my hands steady and the lettering consistent. Finished final touches. A little flip reveal, and these beads are ready to head back to the kiln. Heat setting the paint. Glass line paints heat set to permanence at between 1400 and 1500 degrees. Normally, I would do this on flat glass in a fusing kiln, but with the rounded nature of the beads and the soft melting point of 104 glass, I have to be a bit more creative. I place all my finished painted beads in my little chili pepper kiln using a steel rod rest to suspend the beads off the surface of the kiln and bring them up to a little over a thousand degrees. After a half hour heat soak, I can remove each one carefully, those mandrels get hot, from the kiln and gently fire polish the paint until it's fully set. I use my minor bench burner for a smaller, softer flame and I work well away from the candles to keep from boiling my paint, which can happen very quickly if you get too hot for too long, burning away your colors and bubbling your black lines. The colors, so matte and dry when unfired, really pop once all that binder has been burned away and the glass powder has only the white bead backing to contend with. Each bead gets the heat setting treatment and then goes back to suspension in the kiln for another annealing cycle. Here are the finished beads, ready for cleaning. And now, the final product. 
a hand-painted, fire-set, Fibonacci spiral bead in a custom laser cut box. It was an honor to be chosen by the ISGB to create the 2021 commemorative bead. The project has been intense, but I loved the challenge of it. Here's hoping for even more fantastic beads and in-person gatherings in the future. Thank you so much for watching. 